Okay, now here are some shortcuts for laying out the pattern. I have my pieces with the interfacing. I actually draw on the interfacing and I cut everything out at once. When you sew, you want right sides together. So I'm going to line these up right side together for when I do my pattern as well. And if I keep them together, fabric has a tendency to kind of stick to itself anyway. And when I keep it together, and I'm going to fold this over, eh, no, I'm not. I'm going to line this up basically at the bottom. If, if this isn't even, I could go up a little bit more. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to trace it right on the interfacing because it'll show up better on the interfacing. I am using one of those Marks Be Gone pens for this. They're great because if you spray this down with water, the marks will disappear. But for me personally, I don't care because I'm cutting right on the lines. We won't see them anyway when we're done. Things go flying. And I'm going to go to the slightly longer side. I'm going to make this a bit on the big side just in case. Now, so I know where to cut, I'm going to make marks like that at the end. I'm going to cut as much of this as I can with the rotary cutter. Again, trying to keep the sides together because the rotary cutter just makes four straighter lines. So first I'll cut this off. Again, keeping this stuff together as best I can. Especially with the other end where it's super long, this helps to use the rotary cutter. And sometimes I just take it and cut off this excess. So it's not messing up the cutting I do later. Now on this side, I'll take my fabric scissors, and again, I'm going to try to keep my fabric that's underneath as on top of that as possible. I'm going to cut. I could have done that with a rotary cutter, but that's okay. So that's ready to go and I only had to cut all three parts of it once. The last step, still holding these together, is to pin it together before sewing. I'm pinning in the middle because I'm going to be sewing around the edge. That'll make sure we keep this together. And I'll, I'll snip that off at the end. So now I am ready to sew this one together, but I still need to do the other side. Machine. So I have my pinned pieces. Remember, right sides together. I'm gonna come in here I'm going to start pretty much regular stitching um, about a quarter inch in and on my foot that's that little line right there. So I'm going to hold the back piece, back strand so they don't get all wonky. I'm going to go 
Honestly, I don't need to backstitch this because it's going to be all folded in on itself. If you're worried about it, do a little backstitching. I'm going to set it going and I'm just going to take off. If, um, and I'm also going to make sure the foot stays down, the needle stays down. If these, I put these in the middle so they're not going to get in the way of my feet, the foot here. But if you have issues with that, you might need to take these out. Follow this edge as much as you can. When I get down here, I'm going to have to turn it. And I go till I think I'm about as far as I need to. I'm going to lift up the foot. I'm going to turn it and put it back down so I'm, I'm still on that quarter inch mark. The curve I can follow well enough. When I get to this sharp edge again, the sharp corner, I'm going to go a little further. I'll test here. That's way outside, so I'm going to bring it back in, line it up as best I can. Maybe do another stitch or two. That looks good. Now here again, I'm going to guess when I think I'm close enough to this corner edge. I'm going to check it. Not far enough yet. That's pretty good. I'm going to take that. Again, this, I'm going to shove it out of the way or I'll just take it out. might get in the way so I'll yank it out of the way one down one to go okay now the next step is to turn these inside out and corners like this will keep you there's so much we need to what's called do what's called reducing the bulk there's so much excess fabric here but we don't want it to tear apart but we also want to have a nice corner here. There's too much fabric here for there to be a nice corner. With a curve, there's too much fabric for it to turn inside out nicely. So I like to do it with smaller scissors because I can control them a little better. First thing you're gonna do is cut off the corners. You still need to leave a little bit of something there. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hole. I also cut at an angle like this to reduce it further, but notice I still have a corner. Still have stuff on the other side of those stitches. Now anywhere where we have an inside angle like that, this fabric won't give. So I'm going to make a little hatch cut. Same thing on the other side. Be careful with this that you don't cut through your stitches. Same thing with the edge, the curved edge. I'm going to, this is between every quarter to half inch. You can see it there like that. I'm gonna get as close as I can to my stitches without cutting my stitches. Do that on both sides. You can do them closer together if you feel like it. And then we are ready to turn inside out. Now to turn this guy inside out, this is the long one. It's going to be a little bit trickier. I use a chopstick and for the finer details, a long pointed knitting needle. Now to start, 
I'm going to grab the end, kind of push it in on itself a little bit, and take the chopstick. Now this is why I take a chopstick that is dull, so I'm not going to poke through my stitches. I'll start, and this might be, oh, I already hear it doing something I don't want it to do. Sometimes it's going to try to make the interfacing come off from your side, but it's ironed too. You can always iron it again if you feel it kind of makes a, a, almost a little ripping sound, but your stitches are fine. If you're worried about that, iron it again with that wet cloth. And I'm just going to go in and try to make sure that I'm separating the two sides. I know the angle is not very good on this, but I'm going to start pushing it down. I like to use the force of putting the chopstick on the table to help me out with this. Especially with this longer side, because you're going to have to really bunch everything down as far as possible. See how much of that I still have left? So I'm bunching things down as much as possible. as far down on that chopstick as I can until I get just a little bit even if less than that would be enough to grab that's the right side I'm gonna grab it I'm gonna start easing this down it just goes to show you you can turn even the really long one inside out now See how squished and nasty this is looking? That's not good. That's not going to work. So, long knitting needle. Here we go. I'm going to stick it in and I'm just going to start spreading stuff out as flat as I can as I go. It's going to take me a while to get down to the other end. But you want it flat on the seam. Now when I get to the wider part here, I'm going to start gently using the tip to run along that seam. Again, really gently, if you've got a sharp knitting needle, you don't want it to poke through because then you have a hole in your tie. You can see how one side is, is a lot rounder than the other? Again, I'm gonna slide it down a little further. And this is the part that needs the most work, right? So I'm going to start pressing on those seams to get them as flat as possible. And I would love for to have a sharp corner on my bow tie. But again, I don't want to push too hard because I don't want to poke through. Gently, 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 even across this seam. Now I'm going to flip it over to come back down the other side. That is almost looking like the bow tie, what we want of the bow tie, right? But it's still pretty wrinkly and pretty poofy. So I'll meet you at the ironing board.